Our next speaker is Steve Miller. Steve is the Sustainability Coordinator um, for Mass DOT. He's also um, the PM on a very cutting edge project looking at climate change vulnerability and adaptation solutions for the um, central artery tunnels. Thank you, Lisa. It's uh, really a great opportunity to give you uh, all an update on this, uh, this project we're working on. Uh, it's, I think it's, I consider this the state of the practice myself. Um, this, uh, we partnered with the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, they're very active in, in supporting state DOTs and trying to solve uh, climate uh, change adaptation problems. Uh, so they're partnering with us. They're, they're uh, providing half the funding for this project. When I uh, put the proposal in, I wanted to tap into the local talent. So. Uh, uh, I contacted um, uh, Paul Kirshen and UMass Boston and, and, and Chris Watson and uh, established a team to get this done. Uh, Catherine MacArthur is, the, uh, is, is my assistant on this. So here's the, uh, the, the, uh, the objectives. Um, and the, the central artery is, is, uh, is very important. Uh, for uh, Mass DOT and the federal government. What we're trying to do is establish a way to protect this, um, and the range varies. It's 16 to $24 billion structure, which uh, doesn't include the uh, Sumner and Callahan costs. So uh, we're, we're pretty invested in trying to protect this structure. Uh, we didn't want to do this on our own. Uh, we knew there, were, there was activity in the area, so we, we partnered with uh, everyone we could. We're, I'm reaching out now, actually, and informing everyone of, of what we're doing. Uh, the Environmental uh, Office of Environmental Affairs is, is, uh, is leading the charge for the state in the area of climate change adaptation and, and mitigation. Uh, so they were important for us to, to partner with. Uh, the Boston Harbor Association uh, actually helped me uh, with putting my proposal together. I used some of their mapping in, in the proposal. And uh, I, I also include MEMA and, like I say, anyone else who wants to share information, Boston Water and Sewer Commission and Massport and the MBTA are also involved. I wanted somebody to look over our shoulder to make sure that we were doing things right uh, as best we could. So um, I tapped into uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and uh, NOAA, uh, USGS, and the EPA, and uh, they're, they're helping us look at uh, confirming uh, sea level rise scenarios and also future storm climatology. Uh, I think I include this slide here because this is this. Uh, uh, I've given this presentation a number of times, and it's always an update to the project. Uh, this slide I included. I was uh, I gave a talk at the uh, Netherlands Embassy because they were interested in in in, in our, our approach to this. Uh, but for those who are who are out of country or out of state, this is where the the project area is. And this is the map that I used in our proposal. Uh, the Boston Harbor Association put these together and they gave three scenarios. This is the middle scenario, which shows uh, what could happen today with uh, a storm surge of five feet. So in, in, the, uh, in the boxed areas, I don't know if you can see them that well, but those were the areas that I wanted to focus on because that's where we saw a lot of the, the, the flooding uh, that could occur. But uh, as we got further into the project, uh, you'll see this pointer here, yeah. This is East Boston over here. So this is Sumner and Callahan Toll Plaza. This is the Greenway in here. And this is the entrance to the, uh, the Ted, the uh, Ted Williams Tunnel. And the, the shade of colors, they just show various levels of flooding. And this is, this is based on, on, on a bathtub approach. But this is what we ended up uh, uh, defining as our project area now. It's the, oops, sorry. It's the um, outer perimeter here. Now we're looking at all this. 
because we, we talked with our, with our folks internally about where water could go. And uh, this is what we ended up with. Each one of those index numbers is panels that we, that we uh, showed our, our maintenance folks. This is within our District 6 area of the highway division. They actually uh, have care and control of the tunnel system. So um, uh, this, this really enlarged our scope for us. And we needed, uh, we needed this, this, this uh, technical approach that I'm going to show you because the risk is very high. Um, the, the maps that were developed by the Boston Harbor Association were static. They were just still water. They were bathtub that just water rose and, and flowed around objects. Uh, it didn't include any of the dynamics that could, uh, could that will occur in, in coastal storms. So uh, we needed to, uh, to come up with this uh, approach using uh, ADSERC and SWAN is the, is the, is the, is the methods we're using. Now this is, uh, this is a graph, and if you saw uh, yesterday, uh, Kirk Bosma, I believe, gave a presentation and we're sharing these slides. Uh, he developed a, a lot of these slides for me. I give regular updates to the Federal Highway Administration and uh, various other interested organizations, and uh, we're always changing it and adding it as, as we develop new info. But the, um, this blue line is predicted right here, predicted tide. The red is what we saw with Hurricane Sandy. And this is, this is Sandy's peak here. So if, if the storm had slowed and got here a little bit late, uh, that's what we actually saw in Boston, the 7.4 feet. But if, uh, if the timing was right, we, we could have been up to 9.4 feet in, in the city. So uh, that's why we're using this, this, this sophisticated approach. And, and this method of hydro, uh, hydrodynamic modeling includes all these things we're missing with the Boston Harbor Association. So we include all these dynamics of, dynamic effects that are associated with, with storm surge. This is all the different information we're tapping into to get this thing going. Um, the, the LIDAR was very helpful. Um, uh, bathymetry is taken into account. All, all these things, river flow and stage, we're working closely with the city of Cambridge. They actually um, uh, kicked in a little bit extra money to, to improve their modeling uh, that they're doing over there. Uh, so this is, um, this is tapping into a, a, lot of, a lot of talent. And we're using this, this uh, historical high water marks to, uh, to validate the model. It's very challenging in, in, this, in this city because of, because of all of the, all the buildings and uh, the flood pathways that could occur. And, and we're taking into account uh, for the first time, uh, I believe, uh, nor'easters. Uh, hurricanes have been modeled pretty well using Kerry Emanuel's work here at MIT. Uh, so we're developing this, this method of, of trying to predict what nor'easters can do. And, and, and the tidal influence here in Boston is, is, is pretty great. We have a nine-foot range versus the, uh, the Gulf Coast, where it could range up to a one-foot. Of course, they get hit by hurricanes pretty well. Uh, the other challenging piece is the simulation time for this Monte Carlo that we use. Uh, this modeling has been in place now since um, uh, late fall last year, and we're expecting results in, in August. So these are the two types of models we're using, ADSERC and SWAN. And, and the advantage that, that people see with this is that you can actually take the results of both of those models and, and, and run them together to come, up with, to come up with numbers versus other models where you have an output on one side, output on another, and then you have to kind of work them together and it's a little bit more clunky. But uh, this is getting very popular. Um, uh, Federal Highway Administration is looking at this and using it in their uh, manual for uh, coastal highway design. And this is just a screenshot of, of the thousands of storms that, that we're modeling for hurricanes. 
We haven't done the actual model run yet. This is just something that Kirk put together to, to show uh, what, what this could look like uh, locally here in Boston, where all, the, all these storms here, they get generated out in the ocean here, and they come up, and this is, this is typical uh, hurricane pathway. This is the, uh, the flood scenarios we're looking at. Uh, this is from the uh, 2012 National Climate Assessment. And we've actually, uh, I should probably change this slide because we've updated our, our sea level rise projections. We're using the, the higher level scenario and we're using um, uh, three, we're using the present, we're using 2030, 2070, and 2100. And if you plot them on this curve, if you wanted to, you could actually look at the other scenarios just by dropping a, a vertical line down and interpolating that for the, for the lower emission scenarios. So this is the grid that's been developed for the model. The grid is the, is the, is the foundation. And uh, this, is the, this is Florida, this is the Gulf of Mexico, and this is the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, that's, that's what you need to do in order to capture the storms. That's, that's where they form, that's where they're born. And as you get closer into the Massachusetts here, uh, the grid will get finer. Uh, this this is this grid is probably um, uh, the the grid is probably 100 kilometers uh, out here in the ocean, and as you get closer in, this is this this is what we've done for the city. Uh, we built we built this grid, and this grid here because is is fine. Up you'll see the central artery here. That that grid is about uh, five kilometers right there, and and it, it's it goes out to about 10 out in these areas. And each one of these points of intersection is where we're gonna have uh, elevation data and probability of, uh, of flooding. And, and uh, uh, there's tens of thousands of these locations. And that's really what, what takes the time in developing this model. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, pick a point anywhere on here and you'll, you'll see what the risk is for future flooding for the present, 2030, 2070 and, and 2100. This is just uh, a LIDAR shot of where you see elevation. So uh, this is the high spot right here. This is high spot over here. Uh, these, all the red is high and blue is low. Uh, but that's just uh, superimposed on top of the grid just to show you the value of using, using this LIDAR. But um, this is just a simulation of a, of a calib calibration run. I'm going to see if I can get this to work. And we needed to do this. Uh, here we go. We needed to do this in order to um, identify vulnerable areas within the city. I'll let this run a few times, and then I'll try and slow it down. What it's showing is basically a storm coming in and a storm leaving. And it got to a point where we figured out that uh, protecting the tunnel system itself might not be the right thing. So what we're thinking right now is, let me just get us oriented here. This is the Charles River Dam up here. This is the Charles River. This is the Mystic River up here. This is Four Point Channel. And I'll see if I can step it through to a point. Okay. Oops. I'm sorry. The screen's kind of small. Oh, rats. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is a little tricky. This is a little tricky. I'm trying to show you. Uh, that's not gonna work. I'll have to speed it through for you, I'm sorry. Um, so what it shows, it's tough to see, but water never really overtops the dam. It goes around. 
And up here, there's a, there's, a, there's a point up here at the Schraff's building where water is coming in. So what we've, what we've decided to do is verify the LIDAR data at, at these areas where we saw flooding coming in, right, in, right all in here. So uh, the LIDAR information is useful, but um, what happens is uh, where you have a lot of buildings and where structures are narrow, the LIDAR data gets a little iffy. And so we needed to do some ground surveys to just to verify that um, we were getting real good LIDAR data. If it wasn't, we were going to put the ground survey uh, work in, which uh, using this thing called the CORS network that MassDOT maintains, we can get up to a centimeter in, in accuracy. This is, um, this, is a, this is a part of a flyer that we put out. And this, this actually shows where we're going to have data now. So what, what this has become is, is not actually something that's specific to the central lottery, but it's also going to be valuable in, in planning uh, uh, for, the, for the city itself. And so it, and utilities can use this. And, this, the outputs of this model are going to be publicly available. Uh, I've had some discussions with Kirk and, and the team, and um, when I first got on board with this or first started this project, I envisioned that MassDOT would own this model and, and would, would be able to use it in various different ways. But as it turns out, you need the talent, you need the right people to run this type of stuff. and and so. Um, the way it's going to happen is, is that you will, the public will get that grid of elevation data within, within this area, and they'll be able to use it however they want. So um, we're going to have data at thousands of locations at, at different times uh, uh, of, the, of the century, you know, these, those four points, uh, we're going to be able to look at the flood pathways and, and tell where we could do some adaptation features. I mentioned earlier that <clears throat> uh, at some point you got to ask yourself, is it, is, does it make sense to just plug a tunnel and then push the water in other areas? And that might not make the best sense. So when going, thinking about that, that uh, graphic I showed you about the survey areas, that, those locations might be the place where we build features to keep flooding out. In the event that, you know, that really happens, like this, that's just a calibration run. Uh, the, real, the real results won't be available until uh, August. But that's, um, that's what we're gonna use it for, and this is just some pictures of <clears throat> You know, I guess I was showing people from the Netherlands where we were, so I just, just included these. This is, a, this is kind of a fun, fun this, we, get, uh, we get to, in, in my job, I get to go out in the, in, the, in the tunnel and see these things and see how they're built. And this is a kind of a scary situation. There wasn't much lighting, and this guy, Peter Wadsworth, he's with the MBTA. He's, he's showing us where, that's, the, that's a slurry wall for the artery right there. And uh, this is a grate that runs right along that, that slurry wall. And this is on Atlantic Avenue. So <clears throat> if any water comes in that grate, OK. And it's just a portal to the highway system. These are all possible water entry points. And we. Uh, this is this feature here, this parapet wall, is one of, was one of our survey points. The Charles River Dam is right on the other side of that. And uh, Bill Goad actually let us go on the dam, and we actually uh, confirmed some of his, his survey points. And that's just a shot of the size of this thing we're talking about, these vent buildings. And this, this is all open, you know, there's a door. So all this is possible entry point. And this is, this, is a, this is a shot of some of the fans of the, of the artery. 
Um, these things, these things are so huge. The building was, these the building was constructed around these fans. They're just absolutely huge. Um, and this is under, some of this is underground. It's these, some of these bigger buildings, they, like vent building three and four, they can go seven stories below ground, seven stories up ground, above ground. And um, it's all, some of these buildings have 15 kV going into them, you know, underground with all this switch gear. So this is what we're trying to, we're trying to protect. And I think that's the last slide. Yep. That's it. Thank you.